Good morning and welcome to North End Baptist Church. We are so glad you've been able to join us online. Sadly, we had to close our services this Sunday because we had a COVID exposure last week, but we look forward to getting back in person next week. So please be safe and we hope as you gather in your den or at your computer or watching this on TV that you will not focus on the TV, but you will focus on the Lord who loves you and gave himself of you. As we begin this new year, we hope this is a time of just growth in your life and a time that God does amazing things for you. Good morning, North End Baptist Church. This is Kevin, and I am here at the beautiful South Hills Baptist Church with my great friend, Aaron Kanegi, and um, we are going to lead you in worship this morning. Um, I know that we've got um, a COVID ex uh, exposure at the church, but we can still worship and we can still glorify our God, and I'm doing it from Fort Worth, Texas. So we're going to have a great time this morning. Let's worship together. It's a glorious day when he came out of that grave. Amen. Let's worship. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my fingers I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called. But I know that 
no matter what happened this past year, God was still on his throne. And he always is and he always will be. Because great is our God. The splendor of the King. This is Brother David. I'm going to be leading you in scripture and prayer for this coming Sunday's service, Sunday morning, January 3rd. First of all, I want to read from God's Word. The scripture passage comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 
Paul writes, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's important for us as Christians to understand that God is forming and shaping us each and every day as his children. And we need to be um, open to that uh, molding that God is doing in our life uh, in order that we might be his ministers and his missionaries here on earth. Let us remember that no matter what our circumstances, we are God's ambassadors for this new year. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to serve you in this special way during the course of this year, to be your ministers, your ambassadors, sharing Jesus wherever we go. And Father, we pray that you would give us strength and wisdom as we face the situations that are ahead of us with viruses and with the closing of services and all the challenges that just take place in our lives this coming year. Help us to remember and remember to the uh, to the nth degree, that you, you are in control no matter what the situation, and you will bring about all things to your good will. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for using us again in this special way of being a new creature that we can take your ministry, your mission to the world. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Oh
around me. South Hills Baptist Church and Aaron for hosting me this morning and also for Aaron playing with me. This has been a lot of fun. Y'all have a good afternoon and hope you enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. Take your Bibles, please, and turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, I hope this verse uh, will mean a lot to you today as you begin your new year. God's word says, as for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. Weariness. I I've talked to a lot of people in 2020 uh, that just really struggled with weariness. But it's not just this last year. A weariness is something that can affect each one of us. Uh, I I've heard so many people say they're weary. They're tired of wearing the mask and things like that. And I agree, but at the same time, there are so many other things that bring weariness in our life. Uh, there are so many people who are overwhelmed with work. It's just gotten to the point that it uh, is causing them to struggle and, and and they dread going to work and they're just not as effective at work. And when they come home, they're exhausted from their day. Some people come home and they're overwhelmed at home. Their relationships are a struggle. Or, or maybe they come home and, and they made a commitment to a relationship and their partner is lo no longer there and they're alone and they're struggling and that's, that's overwhelming to them. Or maybe they lost their loved one or maybe their loved one is sick. And that's just overwhelming at times and, and, and hard for us to take. Sometimes financial pressures can build and build and, 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 and it may be because of unexpected things, medical bills, or it can be because we weren't wise in how we managed our money. But however we get there, one day we wake up and we realize that we are over our head and we are overwhelmed 
and we are weary of dealing with their finances. I, I've talked to many people who have the creditors call and they just, they just, they just can't answer the phone. They avoid it because they are overwhelmed. Sometimes it's sickness. Here's the thing. What makes you weary is unique to you and your season of life. But the reality that we all face weariness from time to time is a reality that we will all face. It, it, it can just be difficult. Life truly can. Uh, as we change from 2020 to 2021, we have some of the exact same challenges that we faced in the previous year. It is my hope and my prayer, though, that as you go into 2021, that you turn these problems and these issues over to God and you're able to overcome the weariness in your life and achieve the things that God would have for you. So what do we do when we face weariness, when, when we're overwhelmed, when we're struggling? Well, number one, I would encourage you to focus on doing good. Now, that seems very simple, but that's really what this scripture really tells us. Let me read it one more time. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. Uh, we're all going to get weary from time to time and just overwhelmed. But the passage is simply saying this. Don't stop doing the right things. Don't stop doing good in the midst of that. It, it is so easy just to quit when we are overwhelmed and, and, and not do. I I remember talking to a young person dealing with their finances and, and and they had money coming in. They could send it out. They honestly had the money to, to deal with their issues. They were just overwhelmed and they stopped returning phone calls. They stopped making payments and, and, and they just couldn't deal with it. And, and, and we just remember sitting down and talking with them. Well, let's do what we can. Let's, let's pay off this one bill. And they paid off that. And then they paid off this other one. And eventually, the weariness left them, and they were able to gain that control in their life. But weariness can, can really weigh us down. Sometimes we just start going through the motions. There was a, a song by an artist, I think it was Matthew West, uh, eight, ten years ago, uh, talking about going through the motions. Um, he says, I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to go one more day without your all-consuming passion inside of me. I want to encourage you not to go through just the motions with the Lord. We've missed worship service. Some of us are social distancing and, and, and staying away. And, and in some ways, we still hold on to a relationship with God. But there's a lot of us who have just gone through the motions. And in fact, some of those motions, some of the things we normally do, we can't haven't been able to do lately. And so... I think it's a time that we all can become weary spiritually. And I want to encourage you. There might be a few things you can't do, but there's a lot of things you can do for the Lord. You can still spend quality time with the Lord. One of the things that we've been emphasizing as we begin the new year, I would encourage you to do this, to read along with the church as we're reading through the scriptures. Uh, each week we have uh, a set of scriptures. It's one chapter a day. It takes a few minutes. I would encourage you to at least read those scriptures each day. And then I would encourage you to uh, journal on those. And we've talked about that. And that that's really been a, a food for me and helped me as I've gone through. I don't share everything I do online because I'm going to preach from that passage each week. But I, I, I still journal just about every single day and write down. And, and I find doing that, it makes a bigger difference, a different impact. And it helps me not just to go through the motions, but truly apply God's word to our life. Um, you know, there are areas that we can just go through the motions other than our relationship with God. Let's just talk about marriage. Marriage is a wonderful, wonderful gift from God. It, it truly is. But if you just go through the motions in your relationship with your, your spouse, if you just mail it in and, and, and do the ho-hum all the time, you know what? That relationship will become dry. You can't go through the motions in a relationship with, with your spouse or with your kids or with your parents. You need to put energy into it. You, you got to really do that. Our, our church, we need to be sure that we're not just going through the motions, but we're doing the things that God calls us to do. And we're not just doing them, we're doing them with excellence and we're glorifying God in our life. Uh, the same is true for our relationship with God. Um, <clears throat> 
there's consequences when you just go through the motions, whether it's at church, at work, in life, or anywhere else. You know, you don't dig yourself out of problems. You sort of stay in them and you wallow in them and they just continue on. When you go through the motions, often you create more problems and, and make your situation worse. Um, you know, it keeps yourself from being useful to your family. When, when you're just going through the motions and mailing it in, you know, it, it's, it's tough on a relationship with church or with God and the church because you're part of the body of Christ. You know, weariness has been something I've seen in two, 2020. I want to see us allow God to work in our life to make 2021 a year that God does amazing things. A verse of scripture I would encourage you to look at is in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Look up here with me if you'd like to see it. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You know, one of the things we need to do is it's a matter of what we focus on. If we focus truly just on the things that are overwhelming us, we're going to continue to dwell and, and, and to become wearier. And is that a word? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, and, and just allow it to beat us down. But we want to be sure that we focus on, on doing the things of God. And listen, you may say, well, I, I'm just getting by. I'm just doing doing what I can, I, I, I'm not focused, but, but I, I'm not doing anything awful. But listen, it is a sin not to do the good that you know that God would have you to do. James chapter 4, verse 17 says this, So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, to him it is sin. It's not just enough to go through the motions. We need to do the good things that God has called us to do. We need to seize those opportunities that are in front of us. You know, another thing we need to focus on is focusing on avoiding those things that lead us to weariness. You know, I, I, it's really hard for me to describe the things that you need to do that you need to avoid to avoid weariness. Because first, it, it depends on what's making you weary. But there are things that lead us down that path that we can avoid, that can, that can really help us to avoid the weariness that comes in our life. One of the things that happens so often is sin. Uh, I, I think about Samson and Delilah in the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 16. Samson was a man of God, and he was a man's man. He was a powerful man of God. You read the story about him uh, grabbing an ox bone and slaying the Philistines and fighting the lions, and, and just, he, was, he wasn't just strong. He was empowered by God with strength to be the judge, to lead the people of Israel. And, and, and God used him mightily. But there was a problem in Samson's life, and it was sin that, that crept into his life. It was bad company. Delilah, she was, I, I can only imagine she was an incredibly beautiful woman. And you know, sometimes it just seems like things that are sin have an initial attractive look. But she was a Philistine, and, and that means she was a follower. That meant she didn't follow God, and that's, that's a big issue as it is. But the nation of Israel was at war with the Philistines. She literally was the enemy. I, I mean, he was in a relationship with the enemy. Her beautiful looks didn't matter because she was the one trying to lead him astray. Uh, she was bad for him. Judges chapter 16, verse 15 says this. <laughs> and she said to him, how can you say you love me when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times. Now, <laughs> three times she had asked him, what is the secret of your great strength? And he would make up something and tell her and she would have Philistines jump him and he would beat them up. He hadn't lost his strength. I mean, unless he had no intelligence whatsoever, he had to know that she was checking and that she was testing. But he stayed connected. He was attracted to her physical looks. And it says, and you have not told me 
where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. You know, I think often it's the day after day dealing with issues again and again and again that weigh us down. But I want to share with you, and sometimes these vex us to the point of death. And, and he, in his relationship with her, it, it pulled him down and pulled him down. And finally we read in verse 17, and he told her all his heart. And he said to her, a razor has never come upon my head, for I've been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. And my hand, if my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me and I shall be weak and be like any other man. So when he goes to sleep, she shaves his head and the Philistines come in and they take him captive. Now listen, he wasn't a weak man who became weary. He was a strong man who became weary. Listen, I think us guys are we have a real weakness. We don't like to admit we have struggles. But the truth is, we have struggles. I think women are more apt to talk about that and in some ways that helps them to stay healthy. You know, women live longer, and I wonder how much is it that they're able to talk and get help for some of the issues they have. And, and us men, we keep it inside and it builds. And I'm not talking about you, man. I'm talking about me. I, I, I do that, and, and things weigh on me, and and, and, and things had weighed on him and he gave in and he lost his strength. See, he needed to focus on a relationship other than with her. I mean, it just led him astray. And, and so what are you focusing on? Are you allow, you know, it's really sin that comes in our life and leads us astray. Uh, let me share another verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a crowd of a cloud of witnesses, there are so many positive things in our life that we can focus on uh, that, that, that can encourage us and lift us up. It says this, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so before us, clings so closely, and then let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The word translated clings there is eparitostos. I did not say that correctly, but it's a Greek word. And it means encircling, easily entangling, it clings. The best picture I can think of is kudzu. Uh, my dad worked for the highway department and years ago they decided they had discovered this wondrous plant that would help them instead of having to spend as much money as they were doing, uh, getting the, the dirt to settle beside the roads, they started spraying the kudzu seeds on it. And the kudzu would go in and take over and their plan was we're gonna spray this and let the ground stabilize, and then we're gonna cut it, and then we're gonna spray grass seeds, and the grass is gonna take over. But the kudzu always outcompeted the grass. And the kudzu grew so fast that sometimes they had machinery that they would leave there for a week or two. When they'd come back, the kudzu would literally encircled and entangled, and they'd had spent hours upon hours upon hours digging their equipment out so they could move it to the next site. And sometimes that kudzu would go and, and, and grab a hold of, of, of parts of the, the, the bridge or whatever, and that would grow it, and it would cause damage to the bridge, and it would hold moisture in places it shouldn't be, and it began to tear up the literal things they were using it to save. And it was just, it was an invasive species and it wasn't helpful. And they quit using it pretty much all the way around. But cuts are, it would literally grow up the signs where you couldn't see what the exit was and the speed that you would grow. It caused all kinds of problems. Listen, sin is like that kudzu. If you could become stagnant, and you sit in it, it's gonna come in and take, and it entangles you and holds you there. It, it, another way this word was used is like a fly landed on a spider web, and that spider web would entangle. 
Listen, sin has that habit. It catches you and keeps you. And just like that fly who was just flying through the air and, and hit that web, he wasn't trying to do anything bad. Well, then it loses its life. We've got to be careful what we focus on because if we focus on the wrong thing, especially on sin, we can get entangled and it can take us to our death or, or take us to greater problems and issues and make those problems last longer and longer. It just causes all kinds of problems. Number three, we need to focus on the methods to overcome weariness. I don't know that there's any magic book, uh, bullet. You know, we all deal with weariness from time to time. One of my favorite examples of this is Elijah. Elijah was a man of God. He was a prophet. He was the prophet of God during his time. And God used him in a mighty ways. Uh, the king, uh, he, King Ahab and his wife Jezebel were incredibly incredibly sinful. I mean, they were leading people astray. They were murdering people. They were taking advantage of people. They were awful people. And God used Elijah to prophesy against them. And, and Elijah did. And that's a very bold thing to go against the king. And in fact, it got so bad and so many people were following. God had Elijah stand up and say, there's going to be a famine for the next three years. And, and, and he does. And he has to hide from the king. But God provides for Elijah and brings a widow to cook for him and provide for him and to provide water and food. And, 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 and he's, he is taken care of and things are going well for Elijah. And then God tells him to tell uh, Ahab that the, the famine, the uh, drought is going to end and it does. And still Ahab does not repent. He goes to attack you know, and, and he brings his prophets and they followed another God called Baal. And there's this great confrontation between the prophets of Baal and God uh, led by Elijah. And all these hundreds of prophets of Baal, they, they build these sacrifices. And Elijah challenged them, let's just pray. And if whoever's consumed is the real God. And he, they pray and they pray and nothing happens. And when Elijah prays, after they poured water on it again and again and again, Elijah prays and the fire from God comes down and consumes the offering. The, uh, the prophets of Baal are defeated. And, and Elijah is used by God to win a great, great victory. But, and you may want to take your Bibles, and I don't, I'm not going to put all these scriptures up here because there's several. But in 1 Kings chapter 19, we read in verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. You see, Jezebel, the king's wife, sent men throughout the nation looking for him to kill him. And, and you might ask, and, and I often do, why is this great man of God giving up now and wanting to die? Well, maybe he had understood what heaven was like. Okay, that's that's very beneficial. But God said has still had a purpose for him. Why does he give up here? Why does he want to quit? Well, he's been fighting this battle for over three years. And the reality is he became weary. I would say it's to the point of depression in his life that he's just wanting to die. And I want you to see this because some people act like, Godly people should never have struggles in their life. They should never admit they have problems. This, is, this isn't just a man of God. This is the man of God. And here he is depressed to the point of wanting to die. And so if you are hurting and you're alone, you're not alone. You're not the only one who's ever got depressed. This is a man of God, and God's going to use him again. But here's the thing. I want you to know it, it's not over for you, and you're not alone. I say this because people I love have dealt with depression, uh, several, several people, and, and they get better. Listen, with God, God can give us strength to overcome those issues in our life. So I want you to notice some things that, that God does in his life to, to help him to deal with his depression and his uh, just needs in his life. 
Verse five says, he lay down and slept under a juniper tree and behold, there was an angel touching him. And he said to him, arise and eat. He, he does some things that I think are very important. One, he slept. <laughs> I, he slept. One of the Ten Commandments is that we need a day of rest. One of the reasons we sometimes get overwhelmed is we don't take the rest we need. We don't sleep enough during the night. And sometimes that's because we're working so hard. And sometimes we have bad habits of playing games and things like that. Uh, but you need to be sure that you're getting good rest. But I also want you to notice he got up. Some people sleep just all the time, and, and, and you know that's not healthy either. There's got to be a healthy balance there between sleep and getting up. Sometimes one of the things that is very helpful is to get re uh, to get exercise. We uh, I worked when I was in college some at a juvenile delinquent center helping our kids, and we were uh, a part of a program that we got the kids up and we started exercising. They had to run or play basketball or play volleyball and we had them do different things and, and we compared our results to the real results of the other juvenile delinquent centers that didn't do that and our kids were doing so much better and it was a part of a study they had at Auburn University and stuff so here's the thing getting up and moving makes a difference getting rest makes a difference but I also, also want you to notice that he was touched by angel of God you know when we're in our struggles we we need a touch from God. And so it's not the time to run away from God. It's the time to run to God and seek him and he will bless and help us in our time of need. Verse six then says this, then he looked and behold, there was at his head a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. <clears throat> We need to take care of ourselves. We need to eat. Um, you know, here's another place for balance. Some people get overwhelmed and eat way too much. Some people don't eat at all. You, you got to find that healthy balance. But I want you to notice he wasn't alone. God did not leave him alone. He sent an angel. Now, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, as far as I know, I, I've, well, I, I've never seen an angel come to me and help me when I was in deep struggles. You know who God generally uses? Other believers. Sometimes, often, it's been my wife. Sometimes it's someone in church. Sometimes it's a friend outside of the church who's a believer. But you know what? God created the church to be there for you, to help you in your time of need. And so I want to encourage you to stay involved in church in your struggle times. Look, maybe you need to social distance right now. I, I get that. But you still need to stay in touch with God's people. I, I'm worried about all the people who are in isolation during this time because that's not healthy either. And so be sure that you stay in contact with him. You know, there's hope, you know, knowing that you're not alone, the church being there, that helps. Yeah, this vaccine provides hope, but I think being around God's people is the greatest hope of all. And it says in verse eight, and so he arose and he ate and drank and went in the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights to the man of God. I want you to notice that this, <laughs> This isn't man's strength. This is God gave him strength to go 40 days and 40 nights. I want you to notice he got up and he went again. Uh, here is a man of God who got depressed, but it got better as he turned to God. We worship a God who gives us strength in our times of struggle. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says this, But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Uh, God can give you strength. And I want to encourage you to turn to him in your time of need. Let me go to another verse that's in the New Testament that I think helps balance this. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For, whoever, uh, for whatever one sows, they will he, excuse me, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. When you're in your dark times, you've got to be careful. It's easy to stay stuck and where you're at. You've got to start sowing good seed in your life and focus on doing good and doing the right things and seeking God so that you grow. Look, 
we just go through the motions. We just do the minimum. We become stagnant. You know, uh, that word there, you reap corruption right here. It, it, it makes a big difference. Corruption, it, you know, something that's corrupted, you know, it used to be good. Have you ever had food spool? I, I remember coming in one one uh, morning and I, uh, there was just a little bit of milk left and it, I ate it Friday and it was Sunday morning. I opened it up and I went to take a chug and something just over the next two days, that milk had gone horribly bad. And I remembered as I chugged it, all of a sudden I get that. You should not have to chew your milk. Let me just say that. That, oh, it's awful. And I just spit it out. Something good went bad because it was stagnant. You know, we'd gone out of town for a day or two. You know, when we become stagnant, we can become stale and we can spoil or become corrupt, as the scripture says. So be sure you keep moving, keep doing good, keep focusing on the right things and not the wrong things. What you focus on can make all the difference in the world. Keep perspective. Don't lose heart. You know, eventually, those good deeds are going to have a result. Uh, many people know Johnny Hunt. He was the uh, pastor of Woodstock Baptist Church in Georgia. Uh, big, huge, me mega church. And he was uh, not a godly man growing up. He was a, a pool hall hustler and uh, really just not a great guy. But this guy uh, started reaching out to him and talking to him about Jesus and Eventually, he led him to Christ, got him to come to his Sunday school class and helped him grow. One of the things that I, I was listening to Johnny Hunt one time, and he says, as far as he know, knows, Johnny is the only man that that man led to Christ and that really invested in and, and helped him grow and change. He said he's never led another man to Christ. But God has used Johnny Hunt to lead thousands of other people to Christ. What if that man had given up and never shared with Johnny? My thing is, sometimes we don't see fruit, but keep keep on doing the right things. That fruit will bear in time. It makes a difference. You know, gravity works, sowing works. Eventually, it's going to fall on the good soil, and it's going to grow. You know, life can be difficult. And, and, and I know 2020 has been difficult for many people. As you go into 2021, I hope you don't go into it alone. I, I want to pray that you go into it with Jesus Christ. I, I want to be sure you understand this. No matter what you're dealing with, he loves you and he cares for you. He loves for you so much that he gave his life on the cross to pay for your sins so that today you can receive him as your Lord and Savior. Maybe today you need to begin a relationship with God. Maybe today you've known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you know what the reality is? You need to begin growing. You need to get unstuck in life and start focusing on the things of God, uh, avoiding the things that lead you astray and focus on doing the good things that God has called you to do. I want to encourage you to be faithful to him. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you and I lift up those people who are saints of God who have gotten stagnant and 2020 has been a difficult year to be stagnant. And I'm going to pray that you will help them to focus on you and just May 2021 be just the most amazing year, a blessing of walking, of growth in their life. I want to pray that you will uh, just, just work in their life. And Lord, if there's somebody listening today who does not know you as their Lord and Savior, I want to pray that they'll ask you in their life as their Lord and Savior and that you will do amazing things. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You have a blessed day. Good morning. I have some announcements for you from my living room to your living room or wherever you're watching today's church service. So first off, I'm sure you've guessed since we didn't have in-person ch church today, we are not going to have in-person services on Wednesday. So we're going to continue to stay closed through the rest of the week as far as services go. Our offices will be open and you can always give us a call if you need anything. And then we are hopeful to be back on the 10th. So we will be back for life groups, we'll be back for in-person worship service, and we will be back for deacons meeting, all of these great things happening on the 10th. And then fast forward, forward through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to the 13th, and we will have in-person Wednesday night services. We're going to continue to put everything online so that you can, you can view it. 
um, services will continue to be online, but we you will have the in-person option starting on the 10th. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. It has been a good day to worship the Lord.